welcome to India's show, episode number 327. I'm your host, Thomas Anjo. Joining me today is, well, no one, since I'll be flying solo for this week. You're wondering why am I flying solo for this week? Well, it's one of those things where life gets in the way and an episode needs to be recorded. So, yeah, you get me flying solo this week. Let's hop right into it and not dilly dally. So, in the news, Bonnie Khan announced that they will be having their last convention next year. So, Bonicon has recently announced that 2019 will be their last year of operation. In their official statement via Twitter, they mentioned that for seven amazing years, this fandom has come together to help us host an amazing event. Next year will be our last Bonicon. Join us for a four-day party August 1st to 4, 2019 in Baltimore. So, yes, how do I even put this into words? Bronicon has always been one of my dream destinations to visit as part of this fandom. I know Doc and Dan has been there, and Silver and Sappy, well, <laughs> they're, they're local for the US, so they've been there a few times. And yeah, it's, I, I'm the odd man one out, and I, I really want to go there. It's like one of those dreams of mine, like, I really, really want to be there. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is, and the reality of it is, flying from one place to another costs a lot of money. And in my case here, personally, a flight ticket uh, to and back is just going to cost me 10,000 ringgit. Uh, that will probably cost around a few thousand bucks for you, about a thousand or two, give or take. So yeah. Traveling is one of the big hurdles. Lodging and food and shrag money is going to be another thing. So, I really want to go there, but I have to really, really work hard at it. Unless there's a anonymous sponsor who wants to help me fly there, I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> but yes, um, BronyCon has been one of the awesomeness events I've heard and i would love to participate and yeah maybe probably if i do go there i'll have my own panel and just talk about stuff and i don't know man bronicon being the last next year it's something but anywho if you would like to know more uh do go into the show notes and read about it and off to the next news on a much more happier note the Food Channel recently uploaded a video of uh, one of the bakers baking a custom cake. And said cake is a giant tear pony head cake. And yeah, folks, um, this is worth the watch. Like, you get the main six here and they're stacked up six pony heads high. I'm guessing the cakes are your average looking cakes like average size maybe about eight inch to six inch depending on the height and whatnot and yeah this looks awesome and you guys should really go uh, to the show notes and look at this video it, it's much fun and looking at pony cake makes me happy after that last news yay and talking about baking cakes guess what there's an mlp team baking book out for next year this cookbook is, well, all about the bakings. Um, recipes include cakes and cupcakes, pies, cookies, and bars. What's that? Uh, breads, breakfast treats, pizzas, and savory surprise. Ooh. Um, this book is expected to come out next year in April 2019. Well, that's next year, technically. And other than that, we got no idea how many pages it is or how... Uh, let's see, uh, da -da -da -da. according to the Amazons, it's going to be 144 pages long. Expect the book to come out on April 9th, 2019. Age range for the book is about 6 to 10. So this book is okay, too easy, moderate on the reading skill and doing the baking. I'm not 100% sure. I never really bake anything in my life. Only thing I've cooked is water. Yes. And let's see. Other than that, the book is going to be priced at around 
sixteen dollars. So yay, much awesomeness. If you are the baking sort of type or the person who loves to bake or you know just work with your hands and cook something, this is perfect for you. So let's move on to the last topic. And last topic is Hearthstone adds Harbinger Celestia with a very pony flavor text. So for you guys who got no idea what Hearthstone is, well technically Hearthstone is a digital card game by blizzard i got no idea how this works because i don't play hearthstone so i'm a bit out of the loop if you ask me how to play magic the gathering or card fight vanguard or even Oh, i can explain a few things but hearthstones eh, not so sure so anyhow um the flavor text for this one says she wonders realities taking on many forms one was a unicorn princess Hmm, that reminds me of a certain pony princess. Sunbutt, probably. <laughs> so yes, uh, this is Funzies. Um, if you play Hearthstone, go check it out. Uh, see if you can get the card or maybe you get it for free. I, I don't know. So yeah, it's one of those fun things that Blizzard likes to do. Insert pony reference in almost anything. I haven't seen any pony reference in Overwatch. I wonder if they're going to do any. And that's the news for this week. Anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is my favorite. What have we been doing with our week? And since I'm going solo this week, I think I should go first and last. (laughs) So this week has been rather interesting. I'm not sure how to do this because there's good and bad. So you know what? I'm just going to roll a d20. Even I go good, bad, I go, sorry, odd, I go bad. And it's a 19, so that is an odd. So yes, well, um, I recently chipped a tooth. I think that was on a Tuesday, I presume. Yes, on a Tuesday, while hanging out with friends, um, eating a few things, I suddenly felt my tooth. Or you know, when you eat something, you have that feeling of oh, something's my tooth. I I need to dig it out, something like that. So I had the feeling, and it was persisting throughout the day or so or whatnot so yeah uh, i had that feeling and during the evening when i was just you know poking at it and whatnot or trying to dig it out i chipped it like it came out and i was like what the wow this is not normal i'm scared oh oh god oh god oh god so told my mom about it and she told me that uh, you should probably go visit the dentist even though if you feel good right now and don't feel anything bad, you should probably visit the dentist because you don't want that tooth to get infected later in the day or later in the night. I saw Silver online and, and talked to him a bit. And he mentioned, yeah, uh, that's probably a good idea and you should listen to your mom. So <laughs> the next day, I went and visit the dentist. And the fact of the matter is, I do not like visiting the dentist. I I do not like the experience at all. It's one of those few cases or few places where if I can avoid it, I wholeheartedly want to avoid it at all costs. So yeah, um, <laughs> no avoiding it this time. So I went there, um, visited the dentist. It was really quick. I, I think it was what? Uh, nobody there. <laughs> so I'm guessing a lot of Malaysians um, hate visiting the dentist. So yeah, um, visit the dentist, told her what my situation was, and she said, ah, okay, let me look at it. Ah, yes, we, we need to um, cap this tooth. And she did, did so. And the drilling and the whatnot, oh my god, it didn't really hurt, but you know, the, the nerves, like, the nerve ending on the tooth make it feel, oh my god, ah. But in the end, um, I got the tooth fixed and I'm happy for it. Um, dentist told me to floss a bit more and yeah, <laughs> I do brush my teeth. I do uh, use mouthwash and whatnot, but flossing is one of those things I don't do quite too often. So yeah, I have to do it. So yeah, um, that's kind of the bad thing. Moving on to... The good news or the good part of my week is that I've been playing a lot 
of Mega Man X Legacy Collection. I finished the first uh, collection and got the and got all the achievement for it. Yay me! Woo! And if you guys remember Star, he asked me how was the second part, um, five, six, seven, and eight. And at the time, I said I didn't play it yet, and I say that I don't really remember how my response were for the previous one. And yeah, after playing five, I hate five. Five is not a good game. But I I got all the achievements for five, and moving on to six, I hate six. Six is not a really good game. The reason for this is there are a few levels in the game where it stuns your progress and whatnot. Like it makes you move at its pace, not your pace. So if you really want to speed run or go through this game fast ASAP, oh no, you're not going to do that. You're going to play on its time, not your time. So in Mega Man X5, there's one stage where the water level where you have to follow this submarine and whatnot and yeah um no you, you're not gonna go fast you you have to follow its tempo and oh my god it's so frustrating especially if you want to quote-unquote speed run the game also i had a few trouble in some certain level with certain jumps and whatnot and let's just say the controls are not as good move on to six and six suffers the same problem too and yes it also has this one level where you have to move at its own pace not as bad as five but this one is bad because there is a one touch death kind of situation where you have to climb up racing uh, or trying to avoid this lava and if you touch the lava you're dead it's a one shot thing so yes but the problem is you're stunted by the scrolling of the level, so you can't really speak through this. So yeah, it's an one it's another level with that kind of shenanigans. So that got me really pissed off and I hate the game. Finished it though, got all the achievements for it. And I'm now playing seven and I hate the game. Seven is not good. Seven sucks. Seven is a 2D game trying to be 3D. And unlike... <laughs> ah, well, I, I want to say Sonic, but Sonic really doesn't uh, improve on that formula. But yes, um, Mega Man X7 was not a really good transition to that world of 3D. The side-scrolling bit was okay, but when it decided to change perspective to a 3D kind of angle, it sucks bad. And the part that pissed me off was the opening level. Oh my god. An opening level for a game should be the introduction of how to play the game. It's for people to get a claim to the controls, the system, the world, and its logic. In Mega Man X7... You don't get that much thing of you don't get that much time to learn how to play the game. So what you initially do is just well figure out what button does what and yes okay you do the thing that you need to do. There's this one part near the boss or the end level where I was getting a claim to the controls because the last time I played it was in 2003 was it? Yeah so it's been a while since I played that game. So yeah, after playing or after getting used to the game and playing it and whatnot, I forgot how to deal with this boss. I was using zero and I died and I ran out of lives. Usually in the newer Mega Man games, when you die, they put you in this uh, reset point where, okay, um, do you, would you like to continue? All right, we'll put you in this last checkpoint. Oh no, not in 7. If you die in the first stage, the beginner's level or the introduction stage, they put you back in the very beginning of the menu. 
where you have to click new game. And guess what I had to do? I had to run through all of that stupid introduction again. Let's just say that I have no fond memory of the later Mega Man games. It's it's one of those cliche things to say, Oh, the newer Mega Man games suck. And in this scenario here, I agree. 4 was the starting point for using new sprites. And I love 4. 4 was awesome. The way that they did the game was good and interesting. I, I like it a lot. 5 was a turn that was not really expected because at any point you can switch from playing X to 0 and so was 6 but uh, let's just say that it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. And 7 was the first time that it switched to 3D. It wasn't fun too. It wasn't fun too. So I'm still working my way through 7. And we'll just see how it goes because right now I I, I just hate 7. I, I finished 5 and finished 6. So that's behind me now. Now I have to gruel through 7. And uh, let's just say that it could be much easier. Yeah. But anywho, uh, that's been my week getting through 2 fake and Mega Man's. Yes. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PondyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, we have a... Also, please subscribe to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast available on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill. And, well, coming back up is a fair song. She has been freed from her chains of Wendy's. Yay! She's free now. She's free. Oh, <laughs> expect her to be on more. Uh, I remember what you guys mentioned. She, she, she don't know, but we're going to do something that you guys have been asking for. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, it does eat up on the Patreon spot, but hey, um, you guys asked for it, so I'm gonna count that as a Patreon requesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anywho, where was I? Ah, yes, talking about the Patreons. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and limited content and huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous i like to thank Dr. Cat, Tristan myself like tonight Charles Amy and also Starstream thank you so much guys you have been awesome and keep being awesome guys so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo and we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show see ya